Hi, I'm Michael, and behind the camera is Ellie. We are the bill paying hobbyists, and we're using our hobbies and skill sets to pay down debt and to save up for a down payment on a house. We've been trying to find a way to elevate our pen business, and we may have just found the trick. This week, we're going to take you step by step and show you how we made a pen out of hemp. You heard me. Let's get to it. Today's pen is a little bit different. We're going to use a Mesa kit, which is very similar to the Viceroy pen that I've already done. What's different is the blank. It's a hemp blank. I've never turned one of these before, and I was instructed to put these little pieces of thin balsa on, on all four sides of it and glue it up to help stabilize it while we turn it. I don't know. So, you know, we're going to get to the first part, which I'm actually going to take this on the bandsaw and cut these fins off, and then I will cut it to the tube length, find the centers, and drill our holes. Let's get to it. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to cut these fins off, flush with the outside of the hemp blank, and then I will cut it to size. This is my blank cutting jig. Basically what happens is my tube goes here. I have a gauge, sits on there. My blank goes here and it will cut the length of my tube. I have an adjustment knob here. Since I've never turned one of these before, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit bigger. Normally I'm just gonna leave about a 16th of an inch to an eighth of an inch longer for my blank than my tube. But I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger so I just don't wanna take any chances of a blowout and messing this up. The blowout being when if this blows out at the end when I'm turning it or when I'm drilling it. There we go, that should be good. All right, so tube goes here, my gauge here, and my blank here. That should give you an idea of what the hemp fibers look like when they're compressed. Let's go find our center and drill our hole. All right, so we need to find the center of this blank so that we can drill the hole for the tube. The easiest way to do that is to take a straight edge and we're gonna connect corner to corner and corner to corner. Where those lines intersect will be the center of my blank. That is the center of my blank. Next, I'd like to take my awl and a hammer, my 1950s hammer, and I make an indention. That will help my drill bit find that center. Let's go over to the drill press. So I'm gonna place my hemp blank into my pen vise. Clamp it down, it doesn't need to be super tight. For this particular kit, it calls for a 2764 drill bit. So I'm gonna set that in there. A Couple things I like to do before I start. I like to make sure my drill bit will go all the way down past where my blank needs to drill, and it does. And I also like to check and make sure that my drill bit is straight and turns straight. Good to go. Now I'm going to make sure that's right in the center. Follows that indent I already made. Good to go. And now I drill. And I'm going to take my time. I don't want to go real, real fast. Now hopefully we have a nice smooth hole all the way through. And you'll see that, see how that happened? That's exactly why I made the blank longer than normal. And my hole looks nice and clean. So now we have our hole in our blank and we need to glue our tube to it. Now this tube came from the factory. It's been scuffed up a little bit, but I want a little bit more. So I'm gonna take some 120 grit and scuff this up a lot. The purpose of scuffing up your tube is to help the glue or your epoxy stick better and it helps prevent your blank from flying apart when you're turning it. So make sure you always scuff up your tube and use plenty of epoxy. Some people use CA. I prefer not to use CA glue. I use epoxy. And the epoxy I use, I like to use JB Weld 5 minute epoxy. Mix it up for 30 seconds, and about 5 minutes of working time, and then I let it sit overnight. All right, and then we put it in our blank, turn in and out, in and out, make sure it sits down below the face of your blank, and that's it. Now we let it sit and dry overnight and we'll turn it tomorrow. Our hemp blank has had time to dry overnight. And one thing that happens when you're gluing in your tubes is sometimes you'll get a residual epoxy inside the tube and we need to cut those out first. If you don't, then your bushings for this pen are not gonna sit properly. So the easiest thing I do is I take my X-Acto knife and I just carve them out. You see right there where there's some residual epoxy and I'm just gonna carve that out. Now my bushing will fit. Now check this side. Good to go. This is my Jet 12 by 21 inch lathe. 
What that means is I can turn something that's 12 inches in diameter, like a bowl or a plate, and I can turn something up to 21 inches long, like a spindle for chairs or a banister for stairs, something, anything like that. For this one, this is my headstock, this is my tailstock, this is live, which means it has the motor in it and it turns when I turn it on. This is the tailstock and it's dead. It does not spin. The only what time it spins is when there's something spinning on the headstock. In my headstock, I have my pen mandrel. It's a number two Morris with a shaft on it. It's about a quarter of an inch. It's a little bit smaller actually. That goes there. When the motor turns, that turns. On this end, on my tailstock, is my mandrel saver. It has a bearing inside and a hole all the way through. It does exactly what it says it's gonna do. It saves my mandrel. If I don't have this in here and my blade is turning and I'm pushing, this is gonna bend. If it bends too much, it's gonna get out around and it's gonna wobble and then it's gonna fly off and it's gonna hit somebody and it hurts. So don't do that. For this pen, we need to use our bushings. Make sure you get the right bushings for the right pen kit. I keep an old bushing on the end as a spacer, put it here. Then I will put my bushing for my actual pen kit, my blank, my other bushing. And then I use two spacers. This, These actually came with the mandrel. When you buy it, you'll get four or five spacers. Put that right there. I slide my mandrel, my tailstock over till it touches. Give it a little tap, tighten down my lever. And then I turn this a little bit to make it snug, lock it down. Do not overturn this. If you make it too tight, what's gonna happen is your mandrel shaft is gonna bow and then your blank is gonna turn out around. And it makes an ugly blank. My tool rest, put it into place, lock it down, keep my tool rest parallel to the piece I'm cutting. When you rest your chisel on your tool rest, I'm using my finger here and that's gonna slide back and forth. My thumb holds my chisel back and forth just like this. I want the blade of my chisel to be in the center of this shaft. You always want it in the center of whatever it is you're cutting. Don't tilt it so that your blade goes down. Don't tilt it so that your blade goes up. Keep it level and just go back and forth. Nice, easy, slow passes. This is the control center of my lathe. This is the digital readout. It shows me how fast it's turning per minute, revolutions per minute. This is my speed control knob, my power switch, and my directional switch. For turning pens, and since I'm on this side of the lathe, I keep it in forward. It can also go in reverse, but I keep it in forward. This is the power switch. This is a safety switch. If this safety switch is out, my lathe will not work. With the safety switch in, I'm gonna turn it all the way down to the slowest speed, turn it on, and my lathe will turn at around 188 revolutions per minute. I can turn it all the way up, and it will turn up to around 3,650 revolutions per minute. I'm gonna turn this, this is my first time turning this. I'm gonna turn this at pretty high, probably 3,000, just so that it cuts more than scrapes. If you turn too slow, your lathe is that your cutting tool is, your chisel, whatever you're using is actually scraping. I want it to go fast, I want it to cut. Make sure you wear something to protect your eyes. You can also wear a face shield if you want to protect your entire face. And I'm missing something. Respirator. I'm missing my respirator. I love this thing. It's made by GVS, it's a P100. It's easy to breathe, my glasses don't fog up when I have it on, and it's pretty comfortable. Make sure you get one. I don't know what it says, it says it's hemp. Protect my lungs. You should do that anytime you're turning you know, something I learned that I haven't been doing for a long time, but I'm going to now. Now, just so you know, I'm pulling this out so you can hear me. I turn this up to 3000 and I'm going to take very, very, very small cuts. One, I have those pieces of plywood on the outside, those small pieces of balsa wood, and I don't want them flying off if they get caught. I want to cut them off and I want to be very, very careful. Just take your time. I'm about a quarter of an inch from my bushings, so now is the next step where I need to sand off the ends of my blank so that I can make the blank the same size as the tube and I can make them square with the tube so it fits properly in my pen. So, break all this down. Oh, that loud noise. Somebody moving around her swamp cooler. <laughs> if you haven't seen that video, go check out our swamp cooler. This is my number two Morris drill chuck and it has a offset sanding jig on it. I'll show you how that works. Take off my mandrel saver and that goes in there. On this end, a piece of three-quarter inch plywood on the backer plate and it's got velcro on the front and a piece of probably 120 grit sandpaper. Screw that on and then I get a punch pin the same size as my tube. Punch pin goes here. 
and I slide it all the way back to the back of the chuck for stability and make it straight. Some people use a pen mill. I don't like to use them. I don't know why, I just don't. So that right there, it's gonna keep it square and I just sand it off till I get to the edge of the brass. What I'm gonna see is something shiny and you can tell when you're using them too, you can actually hear it. So I'm gonna turn this down to about 1600. I get it close. There you go, nice and shiny. I noticed there were a lot of loose fibers when I was sanding that in, so it tells me I'm probably gonna have to be very, very careful as I'm turning this, and I may need to stabilize it as I go, and what that means is adding some CA glue as I'm turning it and let the CA seep into here. I'll use it real thin. Hopefully it will help keep this together. Now we're ready to turn again. All right, look at that right there. We had a little bit of a blowout. Luckily, it's not all the way down to the tube, so from here, I'm gonna start adding CA glue. For that, I'm gonna turn it way down. So for this, I'm gonna use some Hobby Town Super Thin, and I always save my little bags that all my pen parts come in, because I can put that on my finger to protect my finger against the CA glue that I'm getting ready to dump on here. All right, so got my CA glue, need my cardboard, protect my lathe. Take my finger, turn my lathe to about 590. I have noticed with using this CA glue that if you use the accelerator before it actually dries the glue, it makes it go everywhere. It's really weird. So I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to let it dry on its own. That's why I put a glove on my finger. You see that smoke? This CA is very caustic, but it's great for this part. Now I'm going to also fill that in with CA glue. When I saw Ken turn his first one, he's the guy that gave me this. He turned one and he actually took some liquid red dye and put it in there with it. It didn't turn it completely red, but I added the red hue to it. Pretty cool. Each CA has its own accelerator, so make sure you don't skimp and try to reuse everything from one product to the next. All right, learning moment. I stopped right there because a little piece of the glue that was originally on there that came over to the side, I felt it give way and I thought maybe the blank pulled away from the tube. It did not, so I am happy with that. I'm just hoping I can get that out of there. As far as I'm gonna use my chisel, I'm gonna use my sacrificial bushings. Ah, Ted. Ted. And sand from here on out. I don't want to blow it out like that right there. No good. <laughs> All right, so I guess if you were ever curious about the blowouts that Michael's constantly talking about. Ta-da! Blowout! Blowout right there, all brass tube, it's no good. Now, some people say, well, just sand the tube off and then use that part of the blank. Well, the problem with that is that makes this blank too short for the pen and then the ink cartridge is too long for your pen and it's not gonna work right. So, time to start over. I'm just gonna chisel that off and do it again. So we will return shortly. Yep. This is take two. As you saw from the first one, it blew out on the end as we were almost finished cutting it. So we're gonna try it again. I got this blank ready to go. It's the, actually the other half of the same blank. I talked to some friends on Facebook and they suggested sanding once I get close to the bushings. Not sanding the bushings, just getting it closer to the bushings by sanding and not cutting with the chisel. So we're gonna try that this time. I also talked with the person that gave me these blanks and clarified the reason for the balsa wood on each side of it. It's to help keep from having a blowout in case I didn't clarify last time. During the time you're getting it round it because when you're cutting on a square blank it it's actually pretty rough on the blank this takes it all the way down to round that plywood actually stays there until it's completely round so that's why we're doing it we're ready to go and let's get it cut I don't know if you can see it while I'm cutting, but in certain spots it gets stuck. It's like it's really soft in some spots and hard in others. So I'm going to stop chiseling here and I'm going to move to 80 grit sandpaper as it was recommended to me and just start sanding it from here. And I'm actually at a stopping point anyway. I can start trimming my ends and squaring those off. So let's do that. From here on out, I'm going to use my 80 grit sandpaper with a backer rod and I turn my lathe down to 1800. And I'm not going to keep sanding on it and let it get really, really hot. I don't want to get it 
so hot that it actually wants to fall apart on its own. So I'll let it cool down every so often. If you ever want to check and see if anything's out of round, take a light piece of some, any kind of wood or something, something rigid, and just rest it on your pieces and see where you get the most vibration in your fingers. Alright, so as you can see I'm beveling my edges, I'm trying to get to a shaping phase. I'm going to get close to my bushings, not real close, just closer. It's taking a while to get here using sandpaper, but I just don't want this to blow out. and. Once I get a little bit closer, I'll change over to my plastic sacrificial bushings. Taking my time. For the shaping, I'm using 120 grit. So we're close to swapping out and putting the sacrificial bushings on. As a matter of fact, I might go ahead and do it. Then I can sand from here and I'll use my caliper to measure. Let's go ahead and swap those out. All right, now we're at the time to use our sacrificial bushings and I left the old bushings on here so I can make sure that I know what size to make them. I use my caliper, 3164, and I need to make this in at 3164. So let's turn that first. Blowout number two. I got that little blowout. I'm gonna take these little fibers and I'm gonna glue them on here because I am using this blank. Uh, I filled that hole in best I could, gave it another coat of CA glue to try to help hold this stuff together while I sand it down to the dimensions it's supposed to be. And we'll see what we get. Normally I would sand with the length of the tube to get rid of any cross or circular sand marks, but since the fibers of this blank are running in this direction, there are no sanding marks. I don't need to do that. All right, now I'm going to sand with 320. It's a 500 grit foam pad, and this is 1500 grit. Normally this is where I would clean with some denatured alcohol, but I don't know what it's going to do to the fibers, so I'm just going to blow it out and clean it off really, really good. My finisher choice is Mercury Adhesives CA Glue. I use the Thin Flex and the Medium Flex. Probably, for this one, I'm going to put about five coats of thin and five coats of medium. It's just a rolled up paper towel. I'm going to do my best not to get it, the CA Glue on the sacrificial bushings. The cool part about doing your paper towels like this is now that I've done that, I can flip it over and use the other side, or I can turn it around and use this end, so I can actually use it four times if I want to. And it helps me keep count of how many coats I put on. We got a beautiful shine on this. Problem is, I need to mess it up before we can make it even more beautiful. Two steps. First step is Abernet, and it's just a sanding medium that goes from 180 grit to 400 grit. And the point of that is to level off any of the ridges from my fingers or from the paper towels as I was applying the CA glue. And then we wet sand, and this is Micromesh from 400 grit to 12,000 grit. And that's what makes it beautiful. So first, let's mess it up. I also want to protect my lathe because I am going to be using water in a few minutes. My lathe is going to be at about 1,500 RPM. Light pressure, not going to push very hard. I just want to smooth out the CA finish. Turn it off. See that? See how it's nice and dull? And that's what I want to do the entire time. I got a line right there. I don't like that line, so I'm going to get rid of that a little bit. Light pressure. If you don't get rid of those heavy lines like that, it's going to show when you polish. It's good practice to do this between every grit. Get rid of all of those lines. And you'll know if you sanded through your CA glue when you go to polish, you'll have a dull spot. Always be careful when you're doing this with a rag. If you get too close or you have too much laying around, hanging around, it gets caught up in that lathe, it's gonna wrap your finger up in it and it's not gonna feel good. I am not gonna call off my numbers as I use the micro mesh. Remember, it's 400 to 12,000 in nine steps. You can also do your cross sanding as you're doing this in between coats, but as this is fiber is running around the blank, I don't need to do that. You're never gonna see any of this and it's all gonna polish away. So here we go. Use plenty of water and try to get it to where water starts flying off like that. When it does that, you're done with that grit. A 
Look how pretty pretty that is. All right, all finished and ready to put together. I'm just kidding, we're not done. Couple more steps I like to do, cause I like to make them shine and I like to protect them. I spent time on it, I wanna protect it. So I got my little honey bear and it has glass polish in it. Not cleaner, not wax, glass polish. You can use what you wanna use. Some people use plastic polish. Some people use automotive polish. Renaissance wax and just a regular paper towel. This stuff can be expensive, so just use a little, little bitty, little bitty, bitty bit. That's it, that's all it takes. Shiny, shiny. Now it's time to put it together. Before I put any pen together, I take, see how dirty that is? It's kind of dirty, so I'm just gonna take some 600 grit wet dry sandpaper and I'm just gonna go in a circular motion and try to get any residual glue off. It helps it set into the pen kit better. Just clean it off and getting any residuals off and making it flat. I also take a chamfer tool and I chamfer the inside of my tube. It's brass, doesn't take a lot of pressure. This is gonna help my parts seat better as well. This is the tip, this is the transmission. These two go together. And your spring, don't ever lose your spring. You need the spring. We're gonna make it easy. Do this part first. Pull off that little wax protective tip. It protects the ball inside the ballpoint. And this is a ballpoint cartridge, not a roller ball. Don't get them confused. Roller ball is completely different. Stick the spring on there, stick it inside my tip, take the transmission, screw it on. Out, in, out, in, done. Important part, my end cap with my clip. You find the right spot where you want it to go. So it's gonna go right there. And then we're gonna press it together. I'm using my drill press. I turn this on the lathe. It's just a soft piece of pine. It goes in the chuck and I'm pressing vertically. Instead of using those expensive pen presses, this is economical, it's very, very cheap. All you need is a piece of pine and your drill press and you're pushing straight down. If you don't have a drill press, you can do the same thing and make two of these and you can press it in your lathe and that is perfectly straight as well. That is a horizontal pen press. And there you have it, voila. And then this, just slides right in there like that. Boom, done. There you go. Pen is complete. Hey bud. All right, it's numbers time, yeah, yeah. For our hemp pen, for our tools and supplies, we're looking at $4. For our time and material, we're at about $35. I plan on selling this on Marketplace for $55. That'll give us a profit of $16. Hope you enjoyed the video. We learned a lot. See you on the next one.